To explain a bit more about value investing, here's an Aussie Warren Buffett disciple, Roger Montgomery. What I'd now like to do is show you what an extraordinary business looks like. The example I'd like to use is Woolworths, and I'm sure you're all familiar with that company. If you have a look, 10 years ago, Woolworths produced a profit of $295 million. Today, it produces a profit of about $1.8 billion. That's an increase of $1.5 billion over 10 years, which is a phenomenal growth rate. But the key is not to look at the growth, because some other things have been growing in this business as well. Like Qantas, more money has been put into this business by its owners. And if you have a look at, at Woolworths numbers, the equity has gone up from $1.6 billion to $6.8 billion. Now that's a very large increase. But unlike Qantas, the return on that money contributed by the owners isn't going down. In the case of Woolworths, it's risen from 18% to more than 26%, almost 27%. So the additional money that's being contributed by you, the owner of the business, is actually producing increased profits and higher returns. Yes, the debt has also gone up with Woolworths. And in fact, where it was $432 million a decade ago, it's now over $3 billion. That's a big increase in borrowings. But the company can afford it because it generates such high levels of cash. There's plenty of cash flow to pay down that debt. So I'm not too worried about that. And generating a 26, 27, 30% return on equity is very attractive. This is an extraordinary business. Now we know what an extraordinary business looks like. How do we work out what to pay for it? How do I decide when a stock is cheap? Well, the process requires a little bit of arithmetic. So stay with me. You'll find it very easy by the time we get to the end. The first thing that we need to understand is the concept of valuing a business. And I want you to just to think about a bank account with $10 million in it, producing a 20% interest rate. So you're generating a 20% return on this particular bank account and you decide that you're going to auction it off and other people have the opportunity to buy it. My guess is that they'll pay more than $10 million for that bank account. They're happy with maybe a 15% return or a 10% return. What, what we call their required return is less than the 20% being returned by the bank account. So they can afford to pay more than the money in that bank account. We'll call the money the, in the bank account equity. It's the same with a business. We're trying to value the equity in a business. Now Woolworths has equity in its business as well. It also has a whole bunch of shares on issue. So what we do is we divide the equity by the shares on issue to get the equity per share. I wanna know what each share is worth. I also wanna know how much of the profit is paid out as a dividend, which I'm gonna go and put in my bank account and get a low return on, and how much of the profit is retained in the business and getting a high rate of return on equity. The return on equity I'm going to use as an estimate for the future is 27.5% because it's pretty close to what the company's actually generating. And finally, the last thing that I want to know or want to use is the return that I'm going to adopt as my return for investing in the stock market. I use an after corporate tax rate of 10%. Combine all those things, we're going to come up with a valuation. Now there's a couple of quick and easy calculations to do in order to find out what Woolworths is really worth. It's estimated intrinsic value. What I've done in my book is put together a couple of tables. So the first table helps us value that part of the business that pays dividends. So we take the 10% required return, which is the 10% return I want for my investment, and the 27.5% return on equity and find a multiplier, and the multiplier is 2.75. We're gonna need that in one minute. The next table helps us value that part of the business that retains profits. So the profits that are compounded and continue to grow at a high rate of return. And again, we line up our 10% required return with the 27.5% return that the company is generating. And that gives us 6.177. And all we do is take those two numbers and multiply them by the equity per share. And you can see that on this slide here. I've multiplied $5.98 by 
or 2.75, and that gives me $16.45. That's what Woolworths would be worth if it paid all of its earnings out as a dividend. The second part you can see here, I've multiplied the equity per share by the multiplier 6.177, which was from the second table, and that gives us $36.94. If Woolworths paid no dividends and kept all of the profits and continued to get 27.5% returns, its shares would be worth $36.94. Now what we know is Woolworths doesn't do either of those things. It does something in between. It pays out 70% and it keeps 30%. So all we're going to do is multiply the first valuation by 70% and multiply the second valuation by 30%. And that's what I've done here on this slide. And that gives me $11.51 for the first part and $11.08 for the second part. I add them together and I get $22.59. And that's the valuation of Woolworths. For 2010, I get a valuation of $26.45 using the same method. Woolworths shares are a little bit higher than that, but recently they were a little bit lower. And my job as a value investor is to buy extraordinary businesses at discounts to the estimate of intrinsic value. And that's how I invest in the stock market in Australia. And it's how you can do it too. It doesn't require a, a great deal of maths, a little bit of arithmetic, and a little bit of thinking about what an extraordinary business is. And I think you've got most of the ingredients, if not all of the ingredients that you need to become a better investor. Well, thanks, Roger. And that was a terrific, simple guide to some powerful ideas.